The Convair B-36 was a strategic bomber from the United States that served in the 1950s. It became the main pillar of the United States' nuclear deterrence against the Soviet Union at the beginning of the Cold War, and with an incredible range of 16,000 kilometers, it was the only aircraft of its time capable of delivering any of the nuclear weapons in the United States arsenal without refueling in flight. Welcome to a new Aeropedia of the World of Aviation video. Before the United States entered World War II, a bomber was already being developed. In case Great Britain was invaded by the Germans, American bombers would have to reach Europe, something impossible for the planes of that time. As the Pacific War progressed, the United States Army Air Forces increasingly needed a bomber capable of reaching Japan from its bases in Hawaii, and Convair was ordered to manufacture 100 B-36 planes before even the two prototypes intended for testing were ready. The first delivery was scheduled for August 1945, but the first flight took place on August 8, 1946, when World War II had already ended. With the beginning of the Cold War and the testing of the first Soviet atomic bombs in 1949, United States military planners looked for bombers capable of delivering the large, heavy first-generation atomic bomb. The B-36 was the only American aircraft with the range and payload to carry such bombs, from airfields on American soil to targets in the Soviet Union. You might think that the B-36 was obsolete from the start since it was powered by piston engines. However, its jet-powered rival, the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, never became fully operational. Until 1953, it lacked the range to reach the Soviet Union without refueling and couldn't carry the large hydrogen bomb. Intercontinental ballistic missiles didn't become reliable enough until the early 60s. Also, not until the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress became operational in 55. The B-36 was the only truly intercontinental bomber. It remained the main nuclear weapons delivery vehicle of the Strategic Air Command or Strategic Air Command. The B-36 was slow and couldn't refuel in the air, but it could fly. Missions to targets more than 5,500 kilometers away with a full bomb load and even staying in the air for up to 40 hours. It also had an impressive cruising altitude for a piston-powered aircraft. This was possible thanks to its enormous wing area and its six 28-cylinder engines, which rendered much of the anti-aircraft weaponry of the time obsolete. The first production aircraft, the only XB-36, was also the only one with a flush cockpit. Due to the bulb-shaped fuselage design, it had a curious landing gear design. It was a tricycle landing gear, but with huge single wheels that caused many problems, especially with ground pressure. After several flight tests, the Air Force ordered it to be redesigned with a main landing gear with four wheels, which increased the weight of the aircraft. was an intercontinental bomber design. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 186 tons and a combat radius of 6,413 kilometers. With the internal fuel tanks, its maximum speed was 700 kilometers per hour and it had four bomb bays to carry up to 39 tons of armament. This was 10 times the load that the workhorse of World War II, the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, could carry even more than the total gross weight of the B-17.
the defensive armament consisted of six retractable, remotely controlled gun turrets and fixed tail and nose turrets. Each turret was equipped with two 20mm cannons for a total of 16. The wings of the B-36 were very large, even compared to today's aircraft exceeding for example those of the C-5 Galaxy. And they allowed the B-36 to carry enough fuel to fly the long planned missions without refueling. It was two thirds longer than the previous super bomber, the B-29. The maximum thickness of the wing measured perpendicular to the cord was 2 meters 30 centimeters and contained an access space that allowed you to go to the engines from the inside. The propulsion system of the B-36 was unique, with six radial engines. Plate and windnet are 4360 watts major with 28 cylinders mounted in a pusher configuration that is quite unusual. Instead of the conventional design of four engines and tractor propellers like other heavy bombers, each engine drove a three-bladed propeller with a diameter of 5.8 meters. While the early P-36 models required long takeoff runs, this situation improved with later versions. In 1954, the turrets and other non-essential equipment were removed, resulting in a lighter configuration. What allowed this aircraft to reach the incredible 50,000 feet or 15,000 meters of altitude for a piston-powered plane? Thank you. With the B versions 3, 6D, Convair added a pair of General Electric J47 jet engines mounted near the end of each wing. These were also adopted on the existing B36Bs. Consequently, the B36 was configured to have 10 engines, 6 radial propeller engines and 4 jet engines, which led to the slogan 6 turning and 4 burning, which sounds better in English, 6 turning, 4 burning. The jet pods greatly improved takeoff performance and speed over the target. During normal cruise flight, the jet engines were shut down to conserve fuel, and when these engines were turned off, some shutters would close to reduce air resistance. The large wing area and the option to start up. The four jet engines that complement the piston engines in later versions gave the BE 36 a wide margin between stall speed and maximum speed. This aircraft had a crew of 15, in just like the B-29 and the B-50. It had a pressurized flight cabin, and the crew compartment was connected to the rear compartment. Through a pressurized tunnel, also through the bomb bay. In the B-36, movement through the tunnel was done on a wheeled cart, pulled by a rope. The rear compartment had six bunks or beds and a kitchen, and it also led to the tail turret. This aircraft was especially suitable for reconnaissance missions. Its high cruising altitude made it difficult to intercept by other fighter planes of the time. The first reconnaissance version was the reconnaissance bomber, 36D, before the arrival of the Lockheed U-2 at the end of the 50s. The reconnaissance bomber, 36 reconnaissance plane, was the main means of reconnaissance over hostile territory, flying over China, where the MiGs provided by the Soviets could not reach them. It operated with the USAV from 1949 to 59 when they were replaced by the jet-powered Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, starting from 55. A 
new version had been built with swept wings and turbine engines with greater speed and range for its scheduled replacement. The Convair IB60, but it was never built in series, it was 70% complete. Similar to the B36, only two prototypes were built, but they were no match for the B52. Some B36s were used in a wide variety of experiments. The strangest one, without a doubt, was the NB36, each a flying nuclear reactor. This one had an operational nuclear reactor and it was placed in the front bomb bay of the plane. It had a 4-ton lead shield that was placed in the front part of the bomb bay and the crew was enclosed in a lead capsule. The nuclear reactor, although operational, was not used to power the plane but rather to study methods of radiation protection and the effects of radiation on the airframe, equipment and crew. And this was done for the possible future construction of a nuclear-powered airplane. The B-36 was never tested in combat and although gigantic, heavy and somewhat outdated. It was the backbone of the nuclear deterrence of the United States and Europe against the Soviet Union. Until jet bombers with sufficient range could be introduced. I hope you liked it, make a new video. My name is Marcos and this is the Aeropedia of the world of aviation.